I was principal at Mercy High School Burlingame from 1969 to 1975. That was 50 years ago when I realized what the whole world was going through at that time was a huge upheaval and all the walkouts at San Francisco State. Those affected the students a great deal and affected us too about how we're going to handle this new kind of way of being a teenager. Our students at that time really came from varied backgrounds. We had, uh, to my memory, about 500 students. We put modular scheduling into our curriculum on the third year that I was principal. That would be 71. And that uh, was a really a very new thing in, in Catholic high school education. I think we were the first ones to do that. One of the big things we did was to really upgrade the tennis courts so that they became official in, in their size. We launched a dance program which was the result of uh, the extended campus program in prior years. By having this dance program, our students uh, began to own the beauty of their bodies and how it could express itself. We were mainly sisters on the faculty, and what we, each one of us did was turn our salary back into the school. So that you might look upon as kind of scholarships for students. Now, there are no sisters in the high school. Therefore, their salaries are not poured back into the high school. And so this Making a Difference uh, scholarship program is the answer, really, to having a wonderful, diverse student body. God has certainly watched over this school and has enabled the leadership to really carry on our charism of mercy. I served as principal at Mercy Burlingame from 1975 until 1980. As a new principal, I think I was very blessed by the faculty. I couldn't have asked for a better group of teachers. In the early 1960s, Vatican II was an ecumenical council held worldwide in the church, and it ended, I believe, in 1965. I think after Vatican II, there was an invitation to involve lay people in church leadership. In some ways, I feel that um, I learned as much from the students and faculty and staff as I led them to learn anything. We found a vocabulary for some of the things that we call part of our mercy values or mercy charism about social justice, care for our environment, trying to root out racism wherever we find it. Our view of religion turned outward more, I think, so that we were seeing the church in the world. I think we were just beginning to realize the importance of cultivating a fund to assist students and devote time and energy to beginning to see the need to raise money. At this point, I think it's crucial to the future of our schools to be able to offer some financial assistance. It's most needed that we continue to work hard in this area. Just being on this campus, I think, was an influence on the students. To have an environment like this, it's a very precious gift. In 1982, when the Sisters of Mercy asked me if I would be willing to step up and be principal, I said, okay, I'll do it for two years. Two years stretched out and it was very exciting. At the beginning of my tenure, actually the absolute biggest challenge was being an all-girls school. More than 10 girls schools closed, and so it was a constant worry. We had a lot of challenges uh, in enrollment, in finance. When I came into the school, things were needing a lot of attention. One of the um, elements that kind of got us through 
the 80s was our just enormous commitment to the education of women. And we were so committed to being an all-women's school that I think it gave us further strength and longevity. October 17th, 1989, 504, I'm sitting at my desk, and uh, the whole building shook and moved and went back and forth. The building basically was cracked. Within uh, four days, that was on Tuesday, on Monday we opened again. And then it was a two to three year process where we essentially replaced almost 90% of the brick facade. There was no structural damage to the school. It was really to the credit of the faculty and the staff, um, all the teachers, all the students that we were able to just kind of carry on. In the course of the 80s, enrollment was up, finances were better, planning was in place, and interestingly enough, we ended up basically with a new building. Certainly throughout my time at Mercy and the following years at Mercy, uh, financial aid has always been a focus. It has now made a difference in so many young women's lives that it is, I think it was probably not even imagined in our time that it could get to this scale. The Sisters of Mercy have always been focused in the Mercy High School environment on the community that's there. In my time as an administrator, it was extremely important that we were working with the whole faculty, and at that time there were less sisters. The leadership was really coming from what we used to call the lay faculty. Those were the school leaders, and I think that's one of the threads that's continued all the way through to today. Someone like Natalie, who was a student there, who went through that whole experience, now to be the head of school, it kind of doesn't get any better than that. I served at Mercy as the principal from 1993 to 2003. I was fortunate to have people to work with who assisted me, plus they also had been given, delegated, you know, authority to do the curriculum, to help with the girls' sports, to be the dean, and so those pieces had already been delegated out. I started trying to have a lens of mercy in my decisions that I was making. I didn't always do that, but I, I tried to look at things and say, what would be the merciful way? What would be the compassionate way? I had several goals. One was many of the schools had gone co-ed, and we value being a single gender, all girls high school. So we really needed to put a lot of attention into recruitment. In addition, it was a time of great progress in technology. And when we first started, we needed to um, meet the needs. We needed to be able to make sure our two buildings were connected and our students certainly needed everything they could have. The hardest day was 9-11. The teachers, everybody pulled together, supported each other. I happened to be outside meeting parents as they came to pick up their daughters. One of them happens to be our current head of school, Natalie Serigliano. And Natalie told me this just a few years ago. She goes, I'll never forget you saying, you, the principal, saying, I need your help. A challenge for me was to try to work the plan through so that a gymnasium on the property would be approved. The desire to have a gym would greatly, greatly help facilitate us. In looking back over the years I've had, I see what a difference people's donations have made. Mercy Burlingame is a very strong school academically, spiritually, and with its student body. So we thank everyone who has made donations to the school, who has made sacrifices for the school and helped keep it moving into the future so well.